Today we have a hand from one of my favorite poker video bloggers, Lex O Poker. And today he has the Pocket Aces playing 500 big blinds deep at 5, 10, no limit. Texas Hold'em. Let's get right to the hand. Pocket Aces, we raised to $30 in middle position. There's two late position callers before the small blind, a pretty action player who's been getting in a lot of pots, three bets us to $180. It's always a beautiful spot when someone three bets you and you're in position with the best hand possible, pocket aces. We're going to put in a four bet here, but we have to decide what sizing should we go. We decide to go around 2.5x plus a little bit more because of the callers in late position. I put in a four bet to $510. The players next to act end up folding pretty quickly and now the action's back on the small blind. He thinks for a while here and it looks like he might be contemplating a five bet, which would be amazing. He started the hand with around $5,000 and I cover him. But eventually, after tanking for about a minute, he decides to make the call. All right, let's talk about this pre-flop action. We raise it up with the pocket aces, get two callers, then we face a three bet from an action player. This is a spot where a lot of people make the blunder of slow playing. You absolutely do not want to slow play when you're playing 500 big blinds deep. You want to make the pot big. You want to give the action player every possible opportunity to do something ridiculous. So definitely put in the four bet. I like the $510 size. You may even want to go a little bit bigger if you think your opponent's just not going to fold very often, as will be the case in many games if your opponents are very loose and very splashy. This is a 5 10 limit hold'em game in Las Vegas at the win. So it's important to try to figure out if you're playing against a loose, insane, recreational business person type who doesn't care if he loses $5,000, or if you are playing against a good strong Vegas local because those types of players are very, very different. Anyway, we put in the four bet. We get called. That's fantastic. Let's head to the flop. We are going to the flop in a four bet pot with pocket aces here with around $1,100 in the middle, which comes out queen, queen, nine, rainbow. The small blind checks. Small blind checks. All right. I want you to take a second and think about what you would do with pocket aces on this queen, queen, nine board with about $4,500 remaining in your stack with the pot being $1,080. Take a second, pause the video and write what you would do in the comment section below. Would you check it back? Would you bet small like $300? Would you bet medium like $700? Or would you bet big like $1,500? Go ahead, pause the video and write what you would do in the comment section below. In this spot, I think you have two viable options. You should either Bet small, which I think is probably the GTO strategy in the spot, or you should check it back. If you bet big or medium, what's going to happen is your opponent's going to start folding out a lot of the hands you really want to keep in, like gut shots or ace high or small pairs. Now, you may say my opponents will never have a gut shot or a small pair in this scenario, and maybe they do, maybe they don't. I'm not sure how action-y of an action player Lexo's against. If this player would three bet a hand like pocket sixes, well, then clearly you definitely want to keep them in the pot with that hand because it's drawing thin to dead while also getting a little bit of money in the pot. If they have hands like Jack-10 suited or King-Jack suited, these are hands that would very likely put in a three bet some portion of the time and then splash around with a four bet, right? So these are all hands that do exist. And against those hands, you definitely want to start getting money in the pot. The problem though, is that most players will have some queens in their range. And when they have a queen in their range or in their hand, you're going to lose a bunch of money most likely. The nice thing about checking is that you never get check raised, which is actually pretty good here because even though your aces are likely good, they're actually nowhere near the nuts. And perhaps most importantly, if your opponent is loose and splashy and battly, by checking it back, you give them every opportunity to bluff on the turn and the river, which is great. So you make it to where you induce bluffs from your opponents while also not getting stacked usually whenever they happen to have a queen. So I think I like checking behind against a loose, splashy, battly opponent, but against a player who is more straightforward, cautious, not insane, I think you probably want to go for a small bet. Sit over to me, and I think most of the time here I should be betting around one third or a little bit smaller on this board, trying to get called by pocket pairs or even ace high, but there's really not many turn cards I'm too unhappy with seeing. It's a pretty dry board, so I decide to put in the check here I don't think I can get three streets of value in a four bet pot on this board. He says he doesn't even get three streets of value. Imagine he is against a hand like pocket tens. If you think pocket tens will fold by the river, if you bet the flop, bet the turn, bet the river, checking it back is not so bad because then your opponent is going to drastically overvalue their hand. And again, you make it to where you don't get stacked or don't lose a gigantic pot when you happen to be against a queen, unless your opponent goes for gigantic bets. 
And if I check back the flop, maybe he'll think I'm weak and he might start bluffing into me on the turn and the river. So I check back the flop and we're going to the turn, which is an offsuit four. So now I'm hoping he might bet a hand like pocket tens or pocket jacks. I'll call and the river's a brick and he'll check to me and maybe I'll make a big bet and he'll call me with tens, jacks, or kings. So he ends up betting out here $600. So something Lexo does not mention here is that his opponent will be bluffing some portion of the time. If your opponent is loose and splashy and battly, a lot of time when it goes check check on the flop, they are going to put you on not a queen or aces or kings. And if they put you on that, some of your more maniacal opponents will try to make you fold. They will. And if that's the case, well, then clearly it's a fantastic spot to check it back because then you've, well, check it back on the flop because then you've induced a lot of bluffs, which you can then call on the turn and then call on the river. Gobble up those bluffs. Yum, yum, yum. I'm going to stick with the plan. I decide to make the call for 600. No reason to raise after we check back the flop. With $2,300 in the middle, we're going to the river, which pairs the board again. It's another nine, and I'm expecting the small blind to check to me a lot of the time. I'll put out a bet of maybe $800 or $1,000, and hopefully he'll call me with all pocket pairs and maybe even ace high. Let's talk about that scenario where the opponent checks, which is not what happens here. But let's talk about the scenario where when the opponent checks. Lexo said he would go for $800 or $1,000 into the $2,300 pot to try to get called by jacks or tens, which I do think is very likely in the opponent's range. But I think you probably want to bet bigger. And the reason I think you want to bet bigger is because if your opponent does have jacks or tens and they are loose and splashy and badly, then they're just not going to fold. Um, if you bet smaller, like 700 or 500, maybe you're trying to get called by ace high, which you block, by the way. Um, but this is a spot where if your opponent has some weird bad underpair, like pocket threes, they're always going to fold any bet, so you don't care about that. If they have a busted draw, like jack 10, they're always going to fold, so you don't care about that. So you really only care about how do you get value from kings, jacks, and tens. And I think a bet of something like 1,400 will just extract way more value than a bet of 800 because I think both bets get called basically the same amount of the time by the same range. However, that doesn't happen. He doesn't check. He also doesn't bet half pot or even full pot. He puts out an over pot size bet here. Mm. He ends up sliding out 29 black chips for a bet of $2,900. Alright, this is definitely not how I was expecting this hand to go. I thought he was going to bet around $1,500 and I was going to snap call, but almost a $3,000 river bet is super polarized here. But he just can't have too many hands that's beating us. He can have quad queens, he can have quad nines, and he can maybe have a queen. But we double block ace queen, and I don't think he's three betting queen jack or queen ten out of the small blind, and then calling a four bet out of position. So there's just not many hands we're losing to here. He could be turning ace high into a bluff trying to get us off a chop, or a king high into a bluff, so I decide after tanking a while, I'm going to put in the call. I want to see his cards. I put in three yellow chips to make the call, and he shows us the bad news. King, queen of clubs for flopping trips, river in a full house, so he takes us for a massive pot here. It's no fun to get taken for a massive pot. I think this is a spot where calling is pretty standard, especially given the read. I want to make it very clear, especially given the read. If we are playing against a weak, tight, passive, straightforward player, they're going to show you a full house a lot. But... That's not the type of player we are against this scenario. We're against a loose, splashy, battly opponent. Uh, Lexo told me that he talked to a few of his friends after this hand, and they said that most Vegas regulars, which apparently this player was, will not make these giant river bets because they do not want to get called and lose $3,000 or $2,900, whatever it was. And if this is a Vegas local who doesn't really make all that big of bets all that often. I generally agree with that because a lot of people are not going to three bet hands like King 10 suited to begin with. And if they find themselves with King 10 suited on the river, they're going to be afraid that you're going to always call with pocket aces or always call with a, a slow play queen. So if the players in your game will literally never use giant bets as bluffs, I think this becomes a very reasonable fold. But if your opponent is good, this is a spot where they will, or at least they should conceivably have hands like King Jack suited, King 10 suited, Jack 10 suited, right? These are all hands that could conceivably bluff. Also, random uh, ace, ace high flush draws, right? The block, or not, ace high, that's what I'm saying. Suited ace high, there we go. Like um, ace five suited, the blocks you from having a hand like pocket aces. That's a hand that may conceivably want to triple barrel it off every once in a while as well. So if that is the type of opponent you're against who will run bluffs with somewhat logical bluffing hands, I just think you must call here. But, but, if players in your games do not use over bets as bluffs, folding becomes pretty reasonable. So that's going to be it for this episode of Weekly Poker. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do me a quick favor. Click the like and subscribe buttons below. Also click the notification bell. Huge thanks to Lexo Poker for letting us use this hand. 
I always appreciate all the video bloggers getting out there, grinding hard all day or all night, going back home, editing the videos and producing content for all of you. So huge thanks to Lexo and all the other poker video bloggers out there who do the work for your entertainment. Good luck, have fun, and I'll talk to you next time.